Ria Sokol is an incredible singer and artist, mother, activist, and global music award winner. Today, I'm joined by her, and we were talking about going viral, but not in the way of which COVID-19 has been going viral, but in the way that Raya's Thank You Coronavirus has been. Raya is the author of the poem and the video, Thank You Coronavirus, which within three days went viral around the world, watched over 15 million times, and I'm sure actually many more times now, uh, where she shares a powerful and compelling perspective of the global pandemic we are all in at this moment. Thank you so much for joining me today, Raya. Hi, thank you for having me. So this is a special series on my podcast, born out of the need to be of service right now throughout this uncertain time, right? I mean, you have the beautiful gift to be in Costa Rica in the jungle, um, but me being in the city of Toronto, a big metropolitan, you can feel the anxiety is quite palpable right? Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of grief and mourning around COVID and this unprecedented time that, you know, even though it's only two weeks in and has been going around the world for much longer now, I think there is a lot that is going to be carried forward. And much of my focus for creating this conversation on my podcast has built a bit of this how do we build resiliency and take care of ourselves and others to get through this time to be stronger and brighter than we have ever been before? So I stumbled upon your video a couple weeks ago, and so that's why I reached out to you, because I fell in love with the perspective around gratitude. So I would love to hear, I guess, your initial response to this pandemic, and then why you decided to put out and create this poem and video. Mm. Wow, thank you. Thank you for saying all that. It's really, it's really powerful what you're, what you're describing. Um, yeah, so where do I start? For me, I look at it, um, I look at it from a higher perspective and uh, at some moments, not always, but when I look at it from the overview, I can see that the uh, collective anxiety and stress was building uh, through the last 20 years very strongly and it was going up 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 higher and higher and uh, stress became like the biggest disease mm -hmm. and what I'm noticing just now it's like the, pan the pandemic it's it pushed us even deeper into this whole anxiety and fear and stress and panic. Something that we've been avoiding for a very long time because we were not taught how to deal with stress or anxiety. When we were in schools, no one had any idea that it's gonna be such a big and uh, dangerous disease. So we didn't get tools. So what we've learned is to avoid it. So it's like the vicious circle. We were working that was causing stress. So we were working even more to avoid the stress. So we're creating even more stress and anxiety. And I've been, I've been working with anxiety since I was a kid. I, I was suffering for chronic anxiety and depression and sleeplessness and eating disorder, all kinds of things that you can imagine. And I dedicated my whole life to, to find tools how to deal with it. And at some point, I started sharing these tools. Um, and because I'm an artist, so I love expressing also not in a conventional straight way. So one day when I was sitting here, I'm waking up every day at 5 a.m. And I was just sitting here and suddenly I just felt this overwhelming fear and anxiety. And it just hit me in my solar plexus. And the panic, I could feel, I recognized what is happening to me. And I was just, I was just observing it. And I was just seeing what is happening, what is happening to me. And suddenly I saw myself uh, as a very little tiny piece of the whole big planet. And 
and this is how I started again seeing it from the overview. And as I started to notice what is happening to me and notice how it makes sense in a bigger perspective and how everything that is happening in a bigger perspective that it just, I, I just started to have this feeling that it has to make sense. It just has to make sense. Mm. There is no other option. Even if it's the, you know, even if it's the end of the world, like it has to make sense, like whatever it is. And we cannot know what it is. And even the wisest people, whether they are businessmen, economic experts, or spiritual leaders, no way. I, I don't believe in anything. We cannot know what's happening. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But what was happening to me, I remember I, I, I am after a cancer um, healing process. And during this healing process, uh, it was a few years ago, at some point, part of my healing was bowing down to this horrible thing that came to me. Bowing down and giving thanks that it came. Mm -hmm. And finding out why it came, what, is, what did it bring to me. And I feel it was a very big step in this healing process. And I found myself in exactly the same place. I felt like I need to go down. I just need to surrender. I cannot do anything with this anxiety. I can just acknowledge it, go down to it, and give thanks to it for whatever it's bringing. And it is a key for me. Okay. It's not about how do we remove the anxiety. It's not about how we get rid of the pain and how we get rid of the, the stress. It's about how we incorporate it, okay. how we integrate it. Yeah. So let's touch on the power of gratitude for a moment. So mm -hmm. the practice of gratitude for me has been a powerful one in my life. I have a daily practice for myself and my kids who are six and eight. And last week I spoke and interviewed Dr. Jillian Mandich. So Dr. Jillian has a PhD in happiness and she is Canada's happiness doctor. And she speaks internationally on the topic. And she spoke specifically about the science out of Harvard uh, Medical of the power of gratitude in relation to happiness. And so I thought it was so beautiful because the video of Thank You Coronavirus is exactly this, finding the silver lining and the gratitude of those moments that, yes, there is chaos and mourning and upset and loss, but like you bring it back to being reconnected, realizing things don't matter, gaining perspective. So I would love to know from you about the practice of gratitude that you spoke about, how you use gratitude in your life, and then what can people do starting today to shift their perspective in this uncertain time? Mm. Well, for sure, um, the, what is profound in the practice of gratitude is it's not changing what is happening. We are changing how we see it. So, so many people want to change something in their lives, whether it's illness, tragedy, uh, whatever, um, uh, disappointment. And they, tr they try to change it outside. It's not about changing the thing. It's, it's changing the way how we perceive it. Mm -hmm. And it's a profound... Um, it's an art actually to be able to do it. It's an art because also because very often it is called a spiritual bypass because what mm -hmm. happens is like we actually don't want to meet the pain. So we're going to bypass and go directly to gratitude and going down to it. So that is also kind of a trap. So what is really important is to acknowledge whatever it is and, and acknowledging it, and as I said, incorporating it and then finding a way to make friends with whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. how I can be friends with my shame, how I can be friends with my jealousy, how I can be friends with my fear. And, and then I can see, okay, it's like, you know, members of our family, we don't always necessarily unconditionally love them, you know, but we're learning how to live with them. Yes. We're learning it as the life goes by and it's almost the same with all these uh, dark pieces that we carry inside of ourselves mm -hmm. so the, the the gratitude exercise is um 
yeah, it's something that I practice every evening with my children. Every, every day we're going to bed, I'm telling them, okay, five things. And we are naming five things that we're grateful for. And it does change something. It really mm -hmm. creates um, that even if it was the most horrible day, we, we will prove that we will find, even if it's just lying on a pillow, you know, because some don't have a pillow to lie on, yes. but we will find a way to, to create this vibration because why is it such a great practice? Because it's changing the vibrations in our body. Like it's, as you're saying, you, you probably spoke about all that with the doctor, uh, your previous guest. It is, it is physically mm, uh, proved. It's not some abracadabra, you know, it's 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 not magic it's it's physics uh, it's changing the vibrations it influences our perception it influences our ability to to breathe to mm. to have oxygen to absorb the oxygen to absorb food to sleep and so forth so it's it's really profound and uh, i truly recommend it as a as a main practice I completely agree. But what would you say to those people that are in the depths of despair right now? Mm. Um, I would just love to hear your perspective on that. Mm. It's interesting that you ask because since the, the video came out, I have uh, a lot of people reaching out to me that are in a deep despair. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing, I'm doing uh, in this, because like we can be in despair because of uh, some, some chronic stress yes. or we can be in a deep crisis, just like we're now. It's like, it's a deep crisis. It's, it's, um, uh, they are saying, they are comparing it like the, the first most traumatic thing, obviously, is death. The second is divorce. And the third one is pandemic, which like, you know, our generations, uh, the generations that are alive now are experiencing for the first time. Yes. So it's, it's a super crisis situation. What am I doing? I am for sure. I am, um, ah, I am playing a lot of calm music. This is the first thing that I do. Mm -hmm. And it's something that... Um, uh, works for me because I don't have to do anything. I, I have to just play the music and it subconsciously works on my nervous system. Mm -hmm. It gives the, the information to my subconscious that my nervous system can relax. So it's mantras, it's all the soothing, calming uh, music that will, in the background, slowly start working with your nervous system. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is definitely meditations. What doesn't work for me is the silent meditation because in a crisis situation, the silent meditation it's like this voice begins to scream you know so it's unbearable at least for me so what i'm doing i'm doing my uh, meditations online so then i speak and i guide and then people are busy listening mm. uh, and i'm also busy talking and i'm still affirming doing all kind of hypnotic uh, affirmations um that are yeah, there are just simply landing somewhere deeper and finding this unconditional silence that is inside of us. And it's mm. absolutely independent from anything that is happening outside the world. Sleeping, for sure. We have to sleep a lot. We have to really also nourish ourselves uh, with good food. Yes. This is also yes. supportive because obviously when we're sitting at home, we have a tendency to eat the junk food because... Um, more time than ever yeah. exactly and more time than ever we eat more so since we're eating more then it's really it really really makes a difference what we're putting in our stomachs I noticed that uh, my nightmares are coming when I don't eat well yes so my anxiety arises so all these kind of little things mm -hmm. but mostly it's noticing how we speak to ourselves and to mm -hmm. each other Mm. It's this inner voice that we have, and this voice is very, very loud now, especially now. So yeah. this is our chance to really meet ourselves and really take a look uh, what what is this voice telling us and how we can make friends with them. Because yes. most, most of the times it's very strong and unpleasant voice. Yeah.
Thank you for sharing that. And I hope that whoever is listening that is stuck right now can find maybe one tool that you can take on today, right? Because that can be pivotal because it's all about those baby steps, finding a little habit that you can practice day in and day out that will lead you to a gratitude practice, to feeling better, right? So thank you, Rhea, for that, for sure. So for those of you that don't know Rhea and her work, She is an incredible, soulful, spiritual singer that has been touted to be, if you show up to her concerts, to be the most moving experience people speak about. That they show up thinking that it's going to be watching a concert, right? You as an artist singer. But in fact, it is almost like this spiritual journey that people come and feel. It actually gives me goosebumps to talk about it. People feel so connected that most of the people that attend of hundreds of people in a crowd are weeping when you are singing. And I have been had the privilege to know your music for quite a while. And I really love your one of your more recent ones of the Hono Pono Pono. And I would love for you to share, I guess, some of the roots of that Hawaiian kind of chant that really is healing for the soul. And I encourage all of you who listen to this interview to download her, purchase her music off of iTunes, wherever you get your music from and listen to that, especially during this time. But for me, it is like a staple for me and my children to listen to. So I would love for you to share. Mm. Yeah, it's the first mantra that I encountered actually uh, in my life. It's a Hawaiian prayer and um, they are called kahunas and they believe that, again, vibration, the most powerful four words that we can say is, I love you, thank you, please forgive me, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And uh, they believe that everything that is happening on the outside world is just the representation of everything that is happening inside of us. Mm-hmm. So it's very, very tricky because then someone might ask, okay, so if I was raped, then what? You mean I created it or whatever tragedy I had? And yes, it's, it's a difficult one and it's hard to acknowledge, especially when it, there are these extreme examples. Right. And the good thing, the good news is that once we're able to take responsibility, even theoretically, for the most horrible situations in our lives, that means that we can change them and that we have the power of creating something differently. Because if I created that rape or, or being cheated or w- whatever tragedy there was, then I can create whatever I want. And they believe that Ho'oponopono, which is these four words, um, is the vibrations of these four words and of this prayer mantra is cleaning the energy. They, they compare it to cleaning your teeth. So it's like you wake up and every, every day you do it. So they recommend to keep doing it because we are alive and different energies are getting stick to us during the day and emotionally, energetically on every level. And if we don't clean, it can get deeper and it can create more of anxieties, more of pain, more illnesses and so forth. So they believe if we repeat this prayer every day, it's like washing our teeth. So we're washing ourselves energetically and um, uh, somehow balancing ourselves. So it's funny because somehow this, this particular song is a hit just now during the vi- coronavirus. We are also singing it every day with my girls. I'm playing ukulele and we're singing it and we're clearing and we're praying and thinking about, you know, the nurses, the doctors all around the globe, uh, all the people who are suffering. We are just cleaning all that and singing. Uh, and I can see that it, it became very popular, especially nowadays when we really need to keep the high gene energetically and emotionally especially yeah i love that and it also reminds people of the practice of 
forgiving, of being grateful, of being yeah. appreciative, right? Um, yeah, it's a beautiful song. You have such a beautiful, powerful voice. I love mm -hmm. it all. So before we part, I would love for you to maybe share a little bit of how we can bring that healing energy forward because we don't know how long this will last, right? I mean, we are in Toronto, just neighbors to the States, and they're predicting that they're going to have over 100,000 fatalities, deaths because of this virus alone, right? So there's a lot of grief that is coming. So I would love to know from your spiritual practice, and I know that you and your partner offer these really beautiful spiritual journeys, almost retreats for people. So I would love for you to share a little bit of that perspective and how we can bring that healing upon ourselves as we are on this long marathon ride with COVID-19. Uh, yes, thank you for this question. Well, like we first of all we need to acknowledge really we are all terrified we are all scared and the shakiness is overwhelming mm -hmm. and um in this crisis critical situations we need to be good to ourselves we really need to give the care that we would give to our beloved child. Mm -hmm. And this is the care we need to give to ourselves, first and foremost. And once we are so gentle and so kind and so slow and so patient with ourselves, and once we're able to offer all the compassion to ourselves and all the love, this is where it all starts. And being really... Uh, yeah, as I said, patient and taking one breath at a time, one step at a time. Mm. It's, we are really all scared. It's like, it's not only you in that, you know, or not only me. It's the whole world is terrified. And we cannot demand from ourselves to be superheroes just now. We need to be good and kind towards ourselves, towards ourselves, and really one thing at a time, one step at a time, uh, and then the same towards the others. Practicing being slow, being good, being patient, and being present. Basically, this is this is the wake up call. We are in a huge collective awakening, and. It's shaking the primal and the fundaments of our beings, of our existence. And it's not the time to fight or blame. It's yeah. the time to really stay present, to hold our hearts, to hold each other's hands mm -hmm. and stay present. Yep, absolutely. And like you remind us all in your beautiful video and poem is that we are all connected and we are all in this together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate <laughs> your voice, your wisdom, what you've been sharing across the globe. Um, and I will link all the details on how you can listen to Rea's music, how you can connect with her, how you can see the video yourself. I appreciate you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you for today. <laughs>